day. I'm Detective Inspector Tara Crank. I'm here as part of Coitlail, part of the Smallwoods Association, to investigate some mysteries around the woodland. Lichens are a combination of organisms that are often described as the ideal partnership. My sources tell me this isn't so true and we will be uncovering some uncomfortable truths about how lichens live. Let's go. To examine the evidence, we're going to need to look at the structure of lichens, some common types that you might find, and also how they affect their environment. Lichens have colonised some of the harshest environments on this planet, including Arctic tundra and desert. But what exactly is a lichen? Well, it's a composite organism, meaning it's formed of two or more organisms partnered together in symbiosis, which is the name for it. A lichen specifically is made up of a fungus and either an alga or a cyanobacterium. When separate, they look very different, but when partnered, you can form these beautiful shapes that you see as lichens. Lichens are often given as the ideal mutualistic relationship, which is one where both organisms benefit. This status is up for debate, however. We need to look in detail at their anatomy to find out more. I present exhibit A. This is the structure of a lichen. The lichen is growing on the substrate which could be tree bark or a rock. Now the top layer of the lichen is called the upper cortex and this is made solely of fungal cells. The next layer is the algal layer which is algal cells enshrined by thin threads of fungus called hyphae. The bottom layer is the medulla and it's mostly fungal cells too that attach directly to the substrate in this crustose lichen. The fungal partner is known as the microbiont, the other partner known as the photobiont. The photobiont produces sugars and carbohydrates for the entire lichen. Lichens are highly successful and colonise even difficult parts of the world, hence why they're known as the ideal mutual relationship. The reason that is up for debate, however, is the fact that the algal cells are actually unable to sexually reproduce themselves. The fungus removes this privilege from them. It also removes their cell walls and increases the, their productivity, making them work harder but with less reward. It's still up for debate what the fungus exactly gives to the partnership, apart from the shared benefit of being able to colonise difficult areas, there's not really much evidence. So what I'm saying is, one organism, the microbiont, is benefiting to the other's detriment. It's a parasitic relationship. One fifth of fungi are found in lichenized partnerships. It's a common survival strategy for them. And there are 1,800 types of lichen in the UK only. They're named after the fungal partners because each lichen has a different fungal partner. When you go on a lichen investigation, bring with you a magnifying glass. We need to see the sus suspects up close. Ah, look, I found some over in that tree. You can see some lichens hiding away on the branches. You might not think much of it now, but up close, we're gonna see a huge array of diverse suspects. There are four groups of lichen we're going to be looking at. Those are the subtypes. We have crustose lichens, squamulose lichens, fruticose lichens and foliose lichens. 
Some of the lichens that are easiest to spot are these ones. They are fruticose lichens. They dangle from the trees with this hairy beard-like structure. This particular one is oak moss and although its name says moss, it's technically a lichen. It has a flat structure with branched parts that look a little bit like antlers. It's got quite a pale greenish grey appearance and you'll find it commonly on oak trees. Another fruticose lichen commonly found on oak trees is Usnea subfloridana, a type of beard lichen. This is the most common and widespread Usnea species and can be found on twigs and branches across the UK. Another type of lichen is the foliose lichen. Foliose lichens commonly have a different colour above and below. This one is known as Palmitrema palatum. That's its Latin name. It doesn't actually have a common name, but you'll see it commonly in woodlands. This one was found on oak and it has a whitish upper with a darker underneath, but the upper, when it's wet, goes more of a greenish colour. This is the common orange lichen. Although its colour can range from orange through yellow to a pale yellowish green, it's a foliose lichen that you may find on roof tiles as well as coastal rocks and in woodlands. You might notice cup-like structures on some lichens. These bear the sexual spores for reproduction. Crustose and squamulose lichens can be very difficult to tell apart sometimes. They both look quite flat to the substrate, but squamulose lichens are a little bit more scale-like in appearance. Lichens are important because they are a habitat and food source for small creatures like mini beasts and even microscopic things like tardigrades. They also are an air quality indicator, so help scientists measure levels of pollution. In addition to that, they are a pioneer species. So one of the first things that colonizes dry land. As a result, other plants are heavily dependent on them for nutrients because the cyanobacterium inside lichens fix nitrogen from the environment. There are 536 species of lichen associated with just ash trees. Now, unfortunately, we're losing a lot of ash to ash dieback. So it's more important than ever that we protect the habitats of our lichens. So our ancient woodlands, um, areas of rock, what you can do to do this is to make sure that you leave any lichens you come across untouched. They can grow only about two to three millimetres every year. Another thing you can do is make sure to appreciate your lichens. Go out and enjoy them. They're really beautiful. For its size, Wales has the highest diversity of lichens in the world. Go out and look for some in your local woodland, bring a magnifying glass and a lichens guide. You can find one from the British Lichen Society website. The Woodland Trust have some great resources, as do Lichens of Wales. If you want to do air quality monitoring, you can look on the Opal Surveys website and they've got a great lichens guide too. Good luck on your investigation. Thank you for joining me on this discovery about the truth on lichens. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, explore the truth on the Koi Playl channel. My name is Detective Inspector Tara Crank, and I'll see you next time 